happy Monday to you. I hope your week's off to a great start and you're ready for another episode of Monday Meditations. Grab your Bibles, open to the book of 1 John. We're continuing to look at 1 John and emphasizing throughout this book, as, as John does, the confidence that we have in Christ the hope of an eternal life. We set the stage last week in focusing on the idea of Jesus walking this earth and and how the message that John is bringing is a message that comes from him. It's going to continue that thought, but emphasizing our response to that. John, the other apostles, they walked with Jesus. They handled Jesus, got to to hear him speak, know what his voice sounded like, and see the miracles that he performed in confirming who he was and to see him resurrected from the dead after that gruesome crucifixion scene. Knowing that he is the Savior, they can't hold that in. They want to pass that on, and and that's what the Holy Spirit wanted them to do as well, and that's why we have the Bible today, to meditate on that word, to have the hope that's in Christ Jesus, the confidence that heaven can be our home because of what he's done for us. But there's some responsibility involved in that, and, and that shouldn't be a scary thing. Many people fail to embrace the lifestyle of Christianity because they're afraid it's just too hard, it's too judgmental, and it's it's just too difficult for us to be perfect. Well, he's not calling on us to be sinlessly perfect. He's calling on us to be faithful, to be complete, to be mature in Him, to realize what He's done for us, and, and to see how much He wants us to be with Him in heaven. And when we think about that love, it's going to cause us some some reflection, some pause to consider what our sin costs and how it hurts him. And so we should walk in the light. And that's what he's talking about here. Continuing in that idea of who God is, he starts in verse 5. We're going to look at verses 5 through 10 here in 1 John chapter 1 and meditate on that text today and, and see how we can walk in the light. We can do this. We can be faithful to him and we can enjoy the fruits of that labor. We can enjoy the blessings that he has to offer in this confident life of walking in the light. Verse 5 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Light dispels darkness. The matter of fact, the, the definition, the strict definition of darkness is the absence of light. And so where God is, there can be no darkness. It's, it's not a little spot here and there. We have some, some things in this world, some anomalies in this world that we see at times. And even something as simple as, as dark spots on the sun. How can there be a dark spot on this great ball of fire that gives light? But we see that. It's not with God. There is no darkness at all in him. He is perfect light. He is complete light. And so this is the message, John says, that we've received from him. This is the message that we share with you. These are ones who, of course, walked with him, handled him, as we saw earlier in verses 1 through 4. And the message is what? If we say, verse 6, that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say we have fellowship with him, a close relationship with him, but we walk in darkness, that can't be because there is no darkness at all in him. Amos 3 verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? We can't have this fellowship with him and walk. And that's a continuation, a continual lifestyle of darkness, sin. Can't do that. We're supposed to be separated from those things. As a matter of fact, John uh, is making this very clear, just like Paul did in the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That grace involves that relationship, that fellowship with God. He says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin, separated from sin, sin equaling darkness, continue to live any longer therein? We're supposed to be baptized into Christ, into his death, and raised to walk that newness of life, as he would say in verses 3 and 4 of Romans 6. Same thing here. If we say we have fellowship with him, but we walk a lifestyle of sinfulness and darkness, we lie another sin, and we, we do not the truth. Jesus would say the truth is what's going to make us free. And isn't it interesting that this source of light in him is no darkness at all. It's also truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So a lifestyle that we're supposed to be living is one that's walking in the light where there is no darkness as much as humanly possible. We can't say we have fellowship with him if we're walking in that sinful lifestyle of darkness. And then he says in verse 7, but contrast that. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Keeps on cleansing us from all sin. You see, there's an emphasis being placed in that subtly on how we can't be sinlessly perfect. If we could, we wouldn't need a continual cleansing of sin. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to trip. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall. But we can't stay down. We've got to get back up and keep walking in the light. Now, again, he said, if, condition, we walk in the light. Well, what is the light? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. So we walk according to the word of God. And we're walking in the light. It tells us that we are going to sin. We're going to make those mistakes. And we need to repent of those sins. We need to confess his name. We need to be baptized for the remission of our sins to become a Christian. And we need to walk that new walk of life, that newness of life, faithful even if it means our death. And this is what he's talking about in this context. But when, what comes from that is a fellowship, a koinonia. Remember, we can't have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. Therefore, if, if you're walking in the light and, and I'm walking in darkness, we can't have fellowship with each other. If I'm walking in darkness and you're walking in the light, same idea. But if we're both walking in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That's a fellowship with God first and foremost because we're walking in the light. But it's a fellowship that we embrace and enjoy on this side of eternity with one another as members of his kingdom, as members of his church, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a fellowship one with another and have that blessing of knowing that our sins are being forgiven, being cleansed by the blood of Christ. Not, not by our own deeds, no, but by the blood of Christ. Our deeds are an outpouring of what God has done for us, our respect for him, our, our thankfulness to him. Our deeds is what cost the blood of Christ in the first place. The wages of sin, death, but the gift of God is eternal life through his son, Romans 6, 23. So we walk in the light. But, but again, there is a condition on this. This is not earning your salvation. This is not earning that cleansing. It's simply doing what God has required for that cleansing to continue in our lives. We can't continue in sin that grace abounds. We can't continue in darkness and have fellowship with God and one another. So he goes on then in verse seven and in verse eight and says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The worst person you can deceive is yourself. To think that that you don't sin, that that you don't have you don't you don't ever make mistakes, that you're above that, <laughs> you're you're already sinning in this. He says you deceive yourself, and the truth is not in you. In Revelation twenty one verse eight says that all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. That's the second death. And so, what do we do about that? Verse nine. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, when you think about that statement, verse 9, you can't leave out verse 7. Verse 9 and verse 7 are, are tied together. Walking in the light, confessing our sins, that's part of it. We're going to make those mistakes. We confess those mistakes. Own it. You remember in the, in the 51st Psalm, David says, I acknowledge my transgression, my sin is ever before me. He realized what he did. He, he owned what he did. And so that, that's what led to his forgiveness. And that's what helped him to be referred to in the New Testament as a man after God's own heart. One who's willing to, to own it. One who's willing to admit those mistakes, to confess those sins. Trusting in the confidence that he will forgive us and cleanse us from, key word here, all unrighteousness. What a blessing that is to know that he'll forgive us if we confess, if we walk in the light and have that continual cleansing. But he closes out chapter 1 with this statement, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If we say we've never sinned, oh, you, you can't say that. God's word is, is clear about this. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All are under sin. There's, not, uh, there's no righteous man on the earth that doesn't sin. That's never been, never will be, except for Jesus. He's the exception to that because he came to be the sacrifice for our sins. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And so if we say we have not sinned, you're making him a liar. And Titus tells us that God cannot lie. There's, there's, there's no way that that's possible. We're lying to ourselves. Don't lie to yourself. Have that confidence that God wants us to have, realizing, yes, we are frail and we do make mistakes and we do sin, but he's willing to give us 
cleansing. He's willing to sanctify us. He's willing to justify us so we can live just as if we'd never sinned. And as a result of that, if you're a New Testament Christian, having heard the word of God, believed that Jesus is the Son of God, you repented of your sins, you confessed his name, and you were baptized into Christ, then walk that newness of life, walking in the light, faithful, even if it means your death, Revelation 2, verse 10. Walk that life in the light and know that you have that continual cleansing that keeps you free from the dangers and the destruction of a separation from God for all eternity. It gives you the blessing of a fellowship with him and with other fellow saints who are walking in the light. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.